Texas State is extending its hand to incoming freshmen. This Saturday, the university will host Bobcat Day, a program for graduating high school students and family members to experience Texas State. Bobcat Day consists of a tour of the campus as famous landmarks. Students and their families can also dine at the student food courts and talk with the financial aid office. Incoming freshmen and transfer students can register for Bobcat Day at the Office of Undergraduate Admissions website. Check-in for the tour starts at 9 a.m. on Saturday. Campaigning for Texas State ASG elections has begun. Tonight, the candidates will have their debate at 5 in Flowers Hall. Amabilia Esparza has more about this week's campaigning in this Bobcat update. The Covo Luna campaign has been handing out flyers, t-shirts, and posting signs throughout the quad. Presidential candidate Chris Covo says he's excited about this year's elections. I think it's going to be one of the more healthy elections that, uh, that we've had here at Texas University. It's going to be very healthy, very happy. You know, we all have the same goals. Um, uh, we just may, maybe want to do them in different ways. The current ASG president, Brett Baker, encourages students to participate. Now is the time for students in the university um, to actually go out there and research the candidates that are running for particular offices, whether it's president, vice president, or whether it's just a senator. Opposing presidential candidate Bryce Loving says he and Kovo share a goal of promoting student organizations, but funding for campaigns is limited for each candidate. And the average amount that they spend on campaigns, you know, $2,000, $3,000, and I'm, you know, I don't have that same, you know, backing support. I'm new with ASG. The candidates are using inexpensive resources like Facebook and Twitter to promote their tickets. ASG candidates will be campaigning in the quad all this week. Voting begins on Tuesday. For Bobcat Update, I'm Amabilia Esparza. Young conservatives of Texas are celebrating April Fool's Day by letting people pie a liberal in the face. The Young Conservatives Chairman David Serber was letting people throw whipped cream pies at his face to show the frustration of radical economic liberalism. As students threw pies at him, Serber held up signs that read, I am distribution of wealth and give me more government. The Young Conservatives will continue doing demonstrations throughout the semester. Texas State University is an institution rich in traditions and history. Since, in, since its inception, women have helped Texas State University earn the prestige it now has. And as Jarrell Rodriguez tells us in this Bobcat update, you, the university has these women honored in a special showcase. The LBJ Student Center may seem like just an entryway to and from the west side of campus, but tucked into a pathway next to the visitor center is an exhibit of a class all on its own. The gallery Southwest Texas Women, the first hundred years, pays tribute to the notable achievements of more than 1,500 women who have helped develop Texas State University. The Southwest Texas President's Council for Women in Higher Education commissioned the gallery and introduced it in 1999 as part of the university centennial celebration. On display are photographs of the honorees and each with a short bio highlighting their accomplishments and contributions to the university. Including the exhibit is the women on Southwest Texas State's first faculty. Jesse Sayers here was a composer of the Texas State alma mater. Other notable inductees include Holly Mills Gardner, who was the first and only Texas State student named Miss Texas USA in 1998, the Gypsies, Texas State's first athletic team in 1904, Late former First Lady Lady Bird Johnson, who was the first woman to receive an honorary doctorate from Texas State in 1982, and Texas State University President Denise M. Trout, the university's first female president. The work of one inductee can be seen every day. Anna Hyde Huntington is a sculptor of Fight of the Stallion statue located in the quad. Mrs. Huntington donated the statue to Southwest Texas in 1951 because she had long wanted to give some of her work to the South. Sophomore Erica Molina admires the university's tribute. Just the fact that the whole history is up there for all visitors to come here and see and that it's centrally located on campus, it's a really great deal. It helps us out a lot. Dr. Lori Fluker, an inductee herself, says the honor is very meaningful to her. The exhibit certainly validates the fact that, that women are doing um, a good job here as we go from our day-to-day -day duties. There are times that you may be thinking, am I making any kind of a difference? Well, the fact that we were honored to be in that display would suggest that the answer is yes to that. If you find yourself in the student center with a few minutes to spare, swing by the exhibit and witness the work of these pioneers firsthand. For a Bobcat update, 
I'm Jarrell Rodriguez. Hispanics are being encouraged to join law enforcement. To that end, Texas State University is participating in a mentoring and internship program aimed at young men and women who might make law enforcement their careers. A pilot program launched last year at Texas State is being recognized by HEPCOA, which is short for the Hispanic American Police Command Officers Association. Captain Paul Chapa of the University Police Department says the program provides tactical training as well as leadership and professional development for the, for the criminal justice majors. The Texas State rugby team has won its second consecutive state championship. The team is called the Renegades. They played Saturday and Sunday in the Texas Rugby Union Collegiate Finals. On Saturday, they easily defeated Baylor 34-12. On Sunday, they took the championship, beating TCU 24-12. Next up for the Renegades is a home game versus Wisconsin-Madison on March 20th, which will take place on the West Campus Fields. After that, the Renegades will travel to Colorado on April 4th to participate in the Western Rugby Union semifinals.